So what Herpes says uh, very briefly about chapters 13 and 14 of the Lotus Sutra is that uh, in chapter 13 there are more prophecies of future Buddhahood and promises on the part of sundry beings to propagate the Lotus diligently. And in chapter 14 we have the Dharmas or practices of the Bodhisattva. Well, you've seen no doubt if you've been listening to any of these chapters being recited is that there's a, a theme throughout most if not all of the chapters emphasizing the importance from the perspective of the writers of the Lotus Sutra that those who are exposed to the Sutra take what they've learned and pass it on to others to copy, to recite, to preach, to teach the doctrine within the Lotus Sutra. Um, what Tigan Dan Layton refers to this as is a self-referential style. Uh, in this book called Discourse and Ideology in Medieval Japanese Buddhism, uh, which is edited by Layton along with Richard K. Payne, uh, in this volume uh, are several uh, pieces, uh, articles, essays, um, by various folks, and one of the ones by Taigan Dan Layton is called The Lotus Sutra as a Source for Dogen's Discourse Style. And I just want to read you one paragraph to demonstrate how this theme, this aspect of the Lotus of uh, referring to itself is characterized by Layton. Um, again, he heads up this portion of his essay uh, with the title The Self-Referential Lotus. The Lotus Sutra itself frequently emphasizes the importance and rewards of reading, copying, and reciting the Lotus Sutra. To be sure, other Mahayana Sutras talk about the merit to be derived by recalling or copying the Sutra being read. However, the Lotus Sutra at times seems to hold this self-referential quality at its center, such that it promises an extreme mode of self-referential discourse that is unique to the Lotus Sutra. The Sutra often speaks of the wonder, wondrous nature of the Lotus Sutra, right in the text commonly referred to as the Lotus Sutra. This rhetorical device can become startling and mind-twisting. He goes on to say, um, various important figures in the Sutra appear within the text of the Lotus Sutra because they have heard that the Lotus Sutra is currently being preached by Sakyamuni Buddha on Vulture Peak. You'll recall that that was uh, a couple of chapters ago uh, where the great stupa of abundant treasures came up out of the ground uh, and in the context of um, Sakyamuni's dialogue with abundant treasures um, Sakyamuni sort of magically uh, drew into the assembly Buddhas and Bodhisattvas from across the universe um, and again, they're all coming to hear the Lotus Sutra, and you remember Abundant Treasures himself, when he heard, he came because Sakyamuni was preaching the Lotus Sutra, and, and told Sakyamuni, well done, well done, um, and said that he would go anywhere to hear the Sutra, and that in fact, wherever the Sutra was being recited or preached, there would arise a, a great stupa of Abundant Treasures. So, uh, again, um, Various important figures in the Sutra appear within the text of the Lotus Sutra because they have heard that the Lotus Sutra is currently being preached by Sakyamuni Buddha on Vulture Peak. For example, as I just said, in chapter 11, the stupa of the ancient Buddha Prabhutaratna, which is Abundant Treasures, emerges from the earth and floats in midair because he has, vow he has vowed always to appear whenever. And Leighton puts that word in italics whenever the Lotus Sutra is preached. In the same chapter, the myriad bodhisattvas arrive from world systems in all directions in order to praise the Buddha for preaching this sutra in which they are appearing. So, Taigan Dan Leighton goes on to draw parallels between this rhetorical style and uh, some aspects of uh, Dogen's style. Dogen being the founder of Soto Zen uh, School of Buddhism. Um, and if you're interested in that analysis, um, I recommend this, this book, Discourse and Ideology in Medieval Japanese Buddhism. Uh, and I think the article, most of that article is also 
available online. Um, and by the way, Leighton, I, I just he, he's a tremendous scholar and has written fantastic stuff. Uh, the one uh, book of which really analyzes in depth some aspects of the Lotus Sutra, but another one, I think it's called Faces of Compassion, um, talks about various um, cos what I call cosmic or um, you know primordial bodhisattvas, the ones that I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, like Avalokiteshvara and Samantabhadra and Manjusri. And it talks about their various attributes according to the to the teachings of Mahayana Buddhism, but then also um, draws parallels between their attributes as in, individual bodhisattvas uh, and various contemporary figures. So it's kind of cool. And again, he seems to me to be both scholarly as well as having a, a real um, resonance with the devotional and aspects of uh, Mahayana Buddhism.